welcome to the ISVR. You join me here in the Anacoat Chamber. This is just one of our test facilities that we use uh, and you'll be able to use uh, as you progress to your degree here. I'm going to be talking in this video uh, through this room and some of our other facilities uh, showing you what we get up to here and what you'll be able to get involved with yourself. I'm surrounded by over 8,000 fiberglass wedges. They absorb the sound uh, to make this room have no echoes. That's what the word anechoic means, without echoes. The sound travels into the wedges and gets absorbed and converted into heat. And any small amount of reflection which comes back from the back wall uh, was, uh, is removed because it's expanding out into open space. We use this room to remove the effects of reflections that you have uh, when you're carrying out acoustical measurements. And that way you can understand uh, the way that the sound is propagating out from whatever you're trying to measure. In your second year, you'll be designing a loudspeaker and you'll be measuring it inside this room. And that means that you're making sure that you're measuring just what you've designed rather than any influences of the reflections uh, that you'd get in a normal room. This is used also uh, by industry, but students get first access. So if you need this room for your individual project, your group design project, or any of the design work that you're doing, you have first priority over industry users who can come in to make this room work. Over here we have a set of wedges which can be removed from the side of the, uh, the room and we can put in its place uh, a silent wind tunnel and this lets us do aeroacoustic testing. We can send uh, a quiet but fast jet of air uh, through the area and then we can measure the effects of turbulent air and how that generates sound. The walls of the chamber and the ceiling are all covered in wedges and the same is true for the floor. Each of these tiles uh, is designed to be as uh, non-reflective as possible, but if you need uh, absolute anechoic conditions, this floor can be removed uh, and anything you're measuring can be suspended from the ceiling so you have a full anechoic space. In order to have full anechoic conditions within this room, we need to close the door. When you're working in here with the door shut, you need to make sure there's someone outside uh, who also knows that you're in here and they can monitor you via the cameras if need be. This will all be covered in your anechoic chamber induction, which you'll need to do if you're working in this room. When you make a normal recording with a single microphone, the only thing you capture is the sound which arrives at that one microphone, rather than the whole acoustical scene. If you want to do that, you need some more advanced techniques. Here we have an Eigen mic. This is a microphone with 32 capsules, and we can combine the output from all of those capsules to work out the sound which is arriving from all different directions. We can combine this uh, with the video from a 360 camera and this lets us uh, join together the whole uh, visual and acoustical scene. You can replay this over a VR headset or even look in the browser uh, and there'll be some links uh, that you can follow uh, to see a recording that we did with this microphone and this camera uh, from a local train station and see what we can achieve uh, using these different techniques. Another way of capturing the spatial information uh, within an acoustical recording is to use a dummy head. Uh, what you've been hearing so far is on a microphone mounted right here and now well, as soon as you're wearing headphones uh, you'll be able to hear what our dummy head is hearing. So headphones on and you can listen to the dummy head. To make this setup a little bit more portable, uh, we have Jake here, and Jake is wearing microphones in his ears, and you'll also have a camera on his forehead, so you'll be able to see his field of view uh, as we're moving through the demos and some of the rooms uh, that we're gonna be showing you. Anytime you see the headphone icon uh, on this video, make sure you're wearing headphones, that shows that we're using the binaural audio uh, recorded from Jake. As we move out of this room, you'll experience the acoustical equivalent of moving out of the sauna and into the snow. You really notice the effect of the reflections that you hear when you're in just normal spaces after you've been in the anechoic chamber where there's no reflections. If you take a listen here, you can hear that pattern of building up reflections uh, in that sound that you hear. And that affects the way that the sound is traveling uh, from my mouth uh, into my microphone. As we continue walking down the, the corridor, we'll move towards the reverberation chamber, which is designed to be the exact opposite of the anechoic chamber. In the anechoic room, we try to minimize the reflections, whereas in the reverberant chamber, we're trying to have as many reflections as possible. The walls are very hard, and so the sound reflects off them, 
and if we set up a loudspeaker we can make a sound field build up in this room so we can generate very loud sounds in this space which are then mixed around by the geometry of the room and also by these panels up in the ceiling. One of the loudest sounds on Earth is the sound of a rocket launch. Even though there's no sound in space, everything that goes up into space has to survive that high level of sound and vibration. We can test the sound of a rocket launch here on the ground and check if whatever we put into space will survive by building up a very loud sound in this room. One of the other uses for this room is for testing the acoustic absorption of different materials. This is useful for architects and building designers so they know what their buildings are going to sound like before they're built because we can test them in a room like this. We can find out what a building sounds like by testing it in our next room. This is the Zeppler lab. Uh, this uh, lab contains a number of different spaces which are used for different types of uh, acoustic measurements and also uh, for demonstrations of what we can do with different types of audio system. First of all we'll go into the audio lab where this is a room that was designed by students. So this was a fourth year group design project. Uh, they were given this part of the building uh, to make uh, a space which would be flexible for designing lots of different types of uh, audio system. We have a 39.1 surround sound system in here that can generate sound coming from any direction. And we use this room to do oralization. This is like a visualization which would show an architect what their building would look like before it's built. We can do an oralization which says what the building would sound like. We can load in the impulse responses from another space or from predictions and then using microphones in the ceiling and in the walls we can make it sound like we're in a different space. This is without the system turned on. And I'll switch the reverb on now. So we can make rooms sound much bigger than they actually are. The first test we did in this was with a group of musicians who played in the Turner Sims concert hall uh, further down on campus and then came in here to listen to what it would sound like with different types of acoustic treatment. Modern cinema technologies uh, are stopping relying on individual channel-based audio like you get 5.1, 7.1 for home cinema and moving towards what's called object-based audio. And this means we can encode the position of different elements in a scene in a piece of cinema and then attach this with metadata uh, into what gets delivered to each different cinema. The processor in the cinema then decides which loudspeakers in the room it needs to switch on in order to create that same effect. And this means you can get large cinemas and small cinemas uh, both having the same type of uh, experience. We can do the same thing in this room uh, by panning different objects around and because we have speakers on all the walls and also in the ceiling uh, we can make uh, full 3D soundscapes there within this space. One problem we have there is if we encode all of our objects as uh, discrete uh, points of sound when we try and reproduce diffuse sound this has some problems. One possible way we can make this work is by playing a sound of, say, rainfall from all the speakers all at once. And you can take a listen in a second to what this is going to sound like. The problem is you have phase effects between all of the different loudspeakers. They constructively and destructively interfere depending on where you are and you get a really unpleasant sound. The way we can fix this is by changing the delay at which each loudspeaker is playing. And then we have incoherent sources which don't add up and constructively and destructively interfere in the same way. And this sounds much more natural. You can take a listen just now for the two different kinds.
Our next space is our active noise control demo. This is designed to be mocked up of an aircraft cabin. You can see here a Q400 aircraft, uh, which is fitted with an active noise control system. Every time the propeller blade goes around, it generates a pulse of sound, uh, and this goes through the cabin and creates a, a really unpleasant tone. We can use uh, actuators within the fuselage or loudspeakers to cancel out this extra noise, uh, making the experience more comfortable for everyone riding on board. If we come inside, you'll see how we've uh, mocked this up. So you'll see we have lots of speakers over here and lots of microphones also in the ceiling. Now when this demo is working, you have one loudspeaker down in the corner, which is reproducing the tone uh, from the engines and then all the other loudspeakers will work together to try and cancel out the sound at each of these microphones. The system's adaptive, so if a microphone or one of the loudspeakers goes offline, the system can work out how to drive the other loudspeakers to cancel out the sound at those locations. An interesting thing is if you move down, if you crouch down in the cabin in one of these aircraft, because there's no microphones there, the sound level will be as it was, or even sometimes louder, because the system is focusing on controlling the sound uh, at head height here. In the aircraft, these microphones would be either inside the fuselage or in the headrests, so they're in line with people's ears. So we cancel the sound exactly where we need it to be cancelled. You can take a listen to this just now. Our next space is our listening room. This is designed to be uh, a normal looking space that would be for uh, like a living room and we can use this for testing uh, different kinds of, again, audio products. So we can test loudspeaker arrays uh, in this location. We have a few set up in here that we'll have a listen to uh, in a little bit. During your individual project or your group design project in years three and four, it's very likely you would use this room if you needed to do subjective testing uh, for your uh, design products. This is a loudspeaker array which can be used uh, to generate zones of sound uh, within the same space. So this can be used for uh, sending different languages uh, to different locations or sending uh, music to one person and uh, speech to another. You can also use this for private sound zones. So if you're in a public space and you want to transmit a message privately to one person, you can use multi-zone loudspeaker arrays like this to focus the sound uh, towards that one person. You can take a listen. Darcy tirou a camisa e me mostrou a cicatriz. Tinha um corte horrível em forma de L que percorria suas costas. Olha aí, Darcy. However, this is certainly not true for inter-individual communication. In fact, it is audition and not vision that is the most relevant social sense of human beings. The auditory system is their most important communication organ. Na véspera da sua partida para Lima. Darcy riu o tempo todo, mas me confessou que a ideia de não tornar a fumar era uma foda. Grave, não? Eu que fumava cinco maços. In the ground floor of building 13 uh, is a student workshop, and here you have access to numerous uh, hand tools, uh, workbenches, and also 3D printers. 
you'll be able to use these uh, for all the different kinds of design projects that you'll be doing uh, while you're uh, working here uh, all throughout your whole degree. Uh, we pride ourselves on having lots of design projects uh, throughout the course which means that you get hands-on uh, with the engineering as well as learning the theory in your lectures. As well as the uh, hand tools and the workshop uh, we also have uh, this room where we have access to laser cutters, a uh, sheet metal break and a vacuum former uh, which you can also use uh, with the permission of the technicians. You'll have training on how to use these uh, on your formal induction. You'll also have access to CNC router, band saws and pillar drills. Uh, again, you'll be given training on how to use these when you start your course. And now you've made it to the ISVR, it's easy to remember that you have sound and also vibration. This is our vibration testing lab uh, where we have a six axis motion simulator. This can replicate vibration in all three translational axes, so forward and backward, left and right, up and down, and also all different kinds of rotation, roll, pitch and yaw. This means that we can replay different types of vibration in a safe environment so that you can do lots of different types of testing. We don't always need the full functionality of the six axis motion simulator. If we want to do more control tests, uh, we can try these individual uh, single axis uh, vibration testing equipment. This lets us move uh, one meter in the vertical direction. Next door we have a horizontal vibration of the same kind. And on the back wall we have a 12 meter track uh, where we can test uh, the vibration and the motion sickness uh, which is called by tilting trains. In your third year, you'll have the chance to do a project of your choice, uh, either in acoustics or in vibration. And for that, you have access to all the different facilities we have here at ISVR. So you might be using this uh, in a few years time. The same goes for our group design projects uh, in the fourth year. If you choose to go on to study the MEng, uh, you'll have a group project uh, where again, you can make use of these wonderful facilities. <laughs>